The pattern fill feature in Cricut Design Space has changed a little bit in the past couple of months. Many of the videos out there today are a little bit outdated and won't necessarily help you with the questions that you may have. Today, I'm going to take you over exactly what to do to use the pattern fill in Cricut Design Space. My name is Kelly and let's get clacking. In order to get started with a pattern fill, we need to have a shape. So I'm going to insert a shape. Let's use a nice little star. And now that we have the shape selected, the panel at the top you'll see is no longer grayed out and we can select many of the functions. Previously, the pattern fill was next to the basic cut selection, but now it's gone. But don't fear because it's just moved. Instead of being right next to it, we just need to make one or two small adjustments first. The first thing we need to do is change it from basic cut to print then cut. Once it's been changed to print then cut, nothing's really changed at this stage. So what we need to do is we need to click on the color and you'll see that there is now a print type that is now at the top. So we're gonna click on print type and we're gonna change that color to pattern. And here is where all of your patterns will load that you have on your system. Many of these are Cricut loaded patterns, but you can load your own patterns into design space as well. Let's show you how to upload your own pattern. So we're going to click on upload and you'll see you can either upload an image or you can upload a pattern fill. Of course, we're going to be using the pattern fill option. Some of the compatible file types are JPEG, GIF or GIF, but I'm of the GIF family, PNG or BMP. So we click upload pattern and we can either drop the file there or we can drag it. So I'm going to click browse. I'm going to load in, let's load in the cow print one. I don't think it's a perfect seamless pattern, but it should work. We can upload it as a print then cut pattern. So I'm going to click upload and you'll see that it kind of jumps back to the screen and you'll think, did it actually do anything? That's what my first thought was, but don't worry, it probably has. So if we go back to our canvas by clicking canvas up at the top, and we click on our star. We can go back to the pattern section by clicking on the color, clicking color again, clicking that to pattern, and now it'll open up all our patterns. So we can now scroll down to the pattern that we want to use, and we'll see that our cow print pattern is right there. So we can click it and it will load in and it will load onto our star. But now that we have the cow print pattern selected, you will see that there is another little section that is selected there called edit pattern. So I'm going to click on that and it'll bring up a whole new panel with many new things that we can look at. The first one that we're going to look at is scale. So that means how big or how small the pattern is on your shape. You can change this by clicking many, many, many times on the little button, or you can use the sliding scale on the side. So if you want your pattern to be very dense, then you'll obviously scale it down on the lower end. And if you want it to be very zoomed in, you'll obviously have it on the higher end of the scale. I'm gonna leave mine around 100 because I think that works. Then the next one is horizontal or vertical. So a horizontal, obviously on the horizon, you will, add, you will then be moving the pattern left or right. Vertical, obviously top down, so then you'll be moving the pattern either higher or lower. So you can adjust where the pattern is on your shape. And then the next one is your rotate. Once again, unfortunately, these ones don't have sliding scales. Cricut, that's maybe something to look into in the future because that would be very useful. But you can also change the numbers. So you can select the number there and you can make that, you know, 45 if you want it to change to a 45 degree angle. Obviously, with the cow print pattern, it doesn't really work all that well. But with other patterns like maybe color gradients, it will work beautifully. And then you can either flip the pattern horizontally or vertically as well. So these are just some of the things that you can do to edit your pattern on your design. You can of course get really creative with using your pattern fills and you can use it for fun print then cut things. So if we delete that one, if we take a nice text, I'm gonna type in my name and I'm gonna change the font to a nice bold font. Okay, so we have a nice bold font now. What I am going to do is I'm just going to move these a little bit closer to each other. So what I'm actually going to do with this one is I'm actually going to change it from basic cut to print then cut like we did with the shape. And you'll see that nothing really changes except for on the side here, it says print then cut. Now that we've changed it to print then cut, what we can actually do is we can actually right click and ungroup so that we can change each of these letters into their own pattern. So we're gonna select a letter, click on the little gray block at the top, change from color to pattern, wait a moment while it loads, <laughs> and then we can change each of these letters into their own pattern, which is super cool. So you'll also notice that not all patterns will actually have the edit function pop up when you select them. So with this one, I want the little shapes to be a little bit more visible, so I'm gonna scale the pattern in quite a bit. 
and I'm going to exit there and I'm going to go into the next letter and change this one. Some of the patterns do sometimes take a little while to download. So like you'll see that one with the stars there is downloading quite one, quite a while, for quite a while now. So I think that maybe it might just be better to just move on to a different one. Unfortunately, sometimes these things happen. <laughs> but so now we have all of the letters changed into their own pattern. So what we can do is we can now select all of them and we can group them. And we can also then do an offset. This is print then cut, so we would need to print this out, but we can create an offset around all of the letters. Let's just make it big enough. And we could then make that a nice print then cut sticker. So if we wanted to send this to the maker and send this to print then cut, then what you can do is you can click on the make it panel and you may notice that a little error pops up on the screen. So it says here, project incompatible. This project is not supported by your current machine selection. To resolve, select OK and adjust the affected layers. So we're going to click OK and you'll notice on the side panel that there is a little triangle on the side here on one of the layers. So we're going to click on this layer just to see what it, the little triangle, just to see what it says. And it says it's not supported by the maker. So the image is actually too large because with print then cut, you obviously need to have it within a certain size range. And this size is unfortunately too big. So we need to reduce the image size to 17.145 centimeters by 23.495 centimeters. So I'm sure that I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the inch ratio would be, but if you have your set to the US, then it would give you the inches dimensions that you would need to set that to. So to resolve that, we're going to select everything. So obviously we want to keep it as an offset and we're going to reduce this image to below 23 centimeters. And you'll see then that that little exclamation mark goes away. So if we had to click make it, it would now show correctly on the make it panel. And it is obviously shown next to each other because we haven't attached the image. So if we go back, we can right click, attach the image, then click make it again. And the Kelly will be on top of the black layer, just like that. I really hope that this quick tutorial was helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more Cricut related tutorials in the future. I will see you in my next video. And remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.